What's going on YouTube? Welcome to S's Angling. Today we're going to be having a bit of fun testing out these Corum Phase 1 feeder rods that I got off Angling Direct for 15 quid. Okay folks, so let's take a closer look at these rods. For today's session, I've paired them with a Daiwa Regal 3000 bait runner reel. I like using bait runner reels for my feeder fishing while I'm filming, because what I can do is I can just pop the bait runner on if I'm messing about with the camera, uh, that way my rod's not gonna be dragged in. And these are a lovely small bait runner reel. So I'm really impressed with these so far. Um, with reels, I like to do a bit of a long-term review. Uh, because that's the ultimate test for a reel. It's not whether it works straight away, it's whether the drag copes with things over time. So, uh, we'll see how we get on with those, but so far I'm impressed by the size and the quality as you'd expect with Daiwa. But onto the rods. They've got green decals, which tell you the model, which is the phase one. These are a 10 foot feeder rod, but you can get them in other sizes. And I got these for 15 quid. They've been reduced. But they're brand new. I'll put a picture up now just in case you can't believe that I got these feeder rods for 15 quid. But we're going to give them a right good test out today. Hopefully get a couple of fish on them so we see how they handle. Obviously you've got your core and brand in there. I've still got the plastic wrapper on <laughs> just to show you that they are brand new. I'm going to take that off in a second. You get one tip supplied with a rod which is a two ounce tip. Which is absolutely perfect for a 30 or 40 gram feeder which is what we're going to be fishing with today. I've already put these on. Uh, I've got eight pound Daiwa sensor on those reels. Phase one feeder rods. I cannot believe that these rods were 15 quid. I can't wait to see how they handle fish. The tip seems quite sensitive, which is good. And they're a very light rod, which I did not expect. Usually what you find is the cheaper rods tend to be very heavy, but these are nice and light. I'm going to get my dad's opinion in a second, who's fishing next to me there on his bite arms. They seem like a sturdy rod as well. I think they'll have a lot of strength in the midsection. I don't think they've got a progressive action, but we won't really know that until we hook a fish. I like feeder rods that bend pretty much all the way down to the rod butt that are nice and soft. So far, I can't say anything bad about them for the price. They look like a really well-built feeder rod. As you normally get with feeder rods, your tip's supplied in a tube just to keep it safe. And they come in this nice protective feeder bag. There you go, Dad, what's your thoughts? Very lightweight, nice slim blank, nicely understated, just a that dark green uh, decals to the base. Real seat. Seems sturdy enough, doesn't it? That real seat. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Core candle looks good quality. Yeah. Let's take that wrapping off. I'm definitely not one of these people that likes to leave the plastic on. <laughs> Usually gets mouldy underneath, doesn't it? If you leave the plastic on for too long. Yeah. And there you go. Let's take that off. Corks well sealed together. Sometimes you have a bit of a division line between different coloured pieces of cork but you can tell that they're well made. Can't argue, you can't, you definitely can't argue for 15 quid, can you? Well, even for the full price of 30 quid. Even at the full price of 30 quid. There's nothing wrong with that rod. Not grumble at that rod. So far, like we'll, obviously I need to see how it performs with a fish on. If we look at how the tip's bending, it's not bending right round to the rod butt, is it? No. So it's gonna be sturdy mid blank. Yeah, it's got a bit of backbone to it. I think it'll handle the bigger carp, no problem. Right, I'm going to get a hook length on. We're going to mix up some pellets and get the feeder out. Okay, folks, so method feeders are on. I'm just going to go with a banded hook length to a size 12 hook. Because I'm just going to be using wafters. I think that's going to be our best chance of getting a fish today in the margin. There we go. Hook lengths are on. Let's get our aqua stim pellets mixed up. I'll put a link for aqua stim in the description for you. 
absolutely awesome pellets these i'm just going to use my pellet wetter this has got some ground bait in as well i don't need many for this session it's only going to be a short session so i can get a fish on these feeder rods with a bit of luck i think the carp are starting to spawn now places hopefully they're not spawning here but knowing my luck they're going to be <laughs> So all I'm going to do is put my pellets in the pellet wetter into here and completely submerge it and now what I want to do is I want to leave that for 30 seconds or round about 30 seconds and they're going to be absolutely perfect. Let's open these up and put that back in there like that hook baits that I'm going to be going with today. I've got some Aquastim F1 Supreme sweet fish meal, which go with the pellets. And I've got some eight mil band and wafters. I'm going to go with a pink one because as you all know, that's my favorite. Pink band and wafter on, eight mil F1 brown wafter. First time I've tried these today. So hopefully we get a fish on one. Make sure you wash your pellet wetter out as well, otherwise it goes mouldy. I'm just going to break these up. Like I say, they've got some ground bait in as well, so they are going to stick together a touch, which is fine. They'll soon break up in the water. And they're ready to go. I am going to focus on the margins, because I think that's going to be our best chance of getting a fish. And there is the product. trying not to make too much noise but it's really hard on these metal pegs got a nice flex in dad's into another fish right so nice and soft these pellets i'm just going to push my hook and pellet into the top like that that's going to be perfect. Honestly, really impressed with the feel of these reels. Right, let's uh, go back there. Sink the line. Tighten my drag up a touch. Let's get a second one out on the pink wafter. I'm probably going to be fishing, I don't know, just out with this one. Maybe about 15 foot, something like that. I'm just going to bury the hook on this one. A little experiment. I'm just going to flick this out. Careful this tree. Definitely got more confidence down that margin. They tighten up to the feeder well. Nice soft tips. Like I said, this is a 32 gram feeder. Well, I just had a savage bite on the Aquastim F1 down the margin here. But I was too busy filming. That's the problem when you're doing this YouTube stuff. I've lost so many fish filming, but it just shot right round and I picked it up, but I got caught on my rod rest. <laughs> so we'll have to try for another. It didn't break the hook length for anything. It just pulled out, but oh my God. <laughs> Absolutely shot off. So far, we've had a bite on one, so that's a good sign. So first time that we've used them today everybody else is going on the lake because we've come for a bit of an afternoon session so i think everybody else is clearing off probably go home have the tea watch the football do whatever they do but we're going to be fishing now probably right through to the evening 
come on, what fish on one of these rods? Can't believe I lost that last one. <laughs> Could have been my only chance that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think we'll get another one. Okay, so I'm going to swap these wafters over. I'm going to have the pink down the margin. And the Aqua Stem F1 to this one that's just flicked further out. see if this slightly brighter hook bait just helps us I'm gonna go a little bit further down this margin under that tree move that rod out of the way a second Ooh, this one's going. This is definitely going to be the test of this rod. This is on the Aqua Stim F1. I've not had a look in on the pink wafter. Definitely feels like an half decent fish, but you can never tell here. So, rod's definitely got some power in the midsection. Still has a nice progressive curve though. This isn't massive and it's got a nice bend in it. Let's bring the net over. The old man's fixed the uh, landing net. He's just riveted the head back on. Bit of twisting through the blank, but that's to be expected. First fish on the rod, christened it at least. <laughs> it's only about it's only about a pound and a half, but had a nice curve in it. There we go, on the aqua stem. <laughs> Good start. So in my opinion, these 10 foot feeder rods are an ideal size. I do most of my feeder fishing with nine or 10 foot rods. Uh, I like to fish in a margin, so they're ideal for fishing down the margin. Oh, fly on me there. Uh, they're ideal for fishing down in the margin. And usually on these small commercials, you're never casting far, but even these 10 foot rods that have no problem uh, bombing out a 30, 40 gram feeder to an island or whatever you want to fish to. So in my opinion, 10 foot is probably the ideal size feeder rod for a commercial venue. I can't believe it's only two o'clock and everybody's packed up and gone home. <laughs> that doesn't say much about the fishing, does it? <laughs> oh dear. Lips are actually nice and sensitive. I am getting little tweaks. So it, it's picking up on the micro movement, which is good. But they're also quite a sturdy tip, being a two ounce tip. So they'll have no problem casting feeders out. They still tighten up nicely round to the 30 grams. They're not dragging the feeder, so they're not too stiff. There we go. <laughs> it's running this one. There we go, so a nice bend in that rod there. Really like these reels as well, to be honest. Hopefully this one's a little bit bigger than that first one. <laughs> I'd have thought it would be being down the margin. Maybe the bigger fish are spawning. Usually quite a good average stamp in here. Really complement these feeder rods well, these reels. Like I said, they're a Daiwa Regal. 3000. <laughs> it's similar size to that first one, it's only small. But like I say, nice action in these, look at that. Even that small carp's bending this rod round. You don't want these feeder rods too stiff because you want them to do exactly what this one's doing, which is taking all the lunges that the fish make. But you also need enough backbone to handle the bigger fish. So it is a playoff. This one's definitely going for it. Got that drag set quite tight. Absolutely speeding around everywhere.
it's not a bad fish. Don't think we've hit our five pound mark yet, but it's certainly a nice one. It's not big enough to take over to the mat, but I don't know, we're not far off. It's got a belly on it. I reckon four and a half that. Not far off four pound that. <laughs> hey, Rod's doing well. 15 quid, can't argue with that, can you? Even at the full retail price of 30 quid, you'd still pay it, definitely. If you're looking for an entry level rod, maybe if you've got kids that want to get into fishing or if you're new to feed a fishing, you want to try it out, ideal beginner rod. That's on the cell wafter down that margin. That one was just a little bit further down. Might have felt just a bit safer to take it. It's quite deep in the margins here. We need to need something a touch bigger and I'll be able to make a conclusion. But I'm happy with them so far. And again down that margin. on the cell wafter. Done quite well in a few places with them now. Another one of them small commons. Really dark common this one. Put the bait runner on that one. The fat thing. What a lovely common. Not massive, but really nice colours. Just really dark. Looks like a proper wild carp. I think that'll be a nice fish when it gets bigger. So all I'm doing these days is just pressing the hook in like that and leaving the bait on top. And I seem to be getting quicker bites doing it that way rather than burying it in the bait and in the feeder. They're definitely feeding a little more confidently a bit further away from my swim. And I'm going to go a little bit further out, I think, this time. Ooh. really violent bites tonight. So hard to judge the size of these. They all fight hard. This one's been staying a little bit deeper. I think it's another common. Got a flash of the scales. It's this left hand margin that's been producing the fish but the wind is blowing in this way. I was just about to cast this other rod a little bit further out towards the middle. I think it's bigger than them others. Again, there is some flexing to the left on the rod rings, but I really can't complain for 15 quid, can I? Yeah, it's a nice one, that. They do go bigger in here, but it's still better than we've been getting. Dad into a fish that's taking line there. Might be one to look at on the map this. Pristine fish, got some nice colours on it. Didn't like that net. <laughs> yeah, this rod's holding up well. What I mean by the twist in the rod rings is, can you see how when I'm playing this fish, the end of the tips twist into the left?
so there's a little bit of flex in the rod rings under pressure but that is really not a problem as you can see it's handling this probably five pound carp no problem and we're in let's take a look at it on the mat yeah it's a nice comment that it's definitely over the five pound mark lovely big orange paddle tail on it on the 15 pound feeder rod that way other way go on finally got a fish on the right hand rod I just cast that out a bit further need to be careful because there's quite a lot of snags in the middle there just get it up and over them Not sure how big it is. It's coming in, but it feels a bit of a dead weight. Oh, don't get me up the line. Of all the margins, why that one? There we go. So I have to get it in across my other. Oh, putting a, I'm putting a lot of pressure on it here. Like I said, rod's coping fine. Plenty of backbone in it. Young lads across the bank there have had a, a couple of fish. They've just turned up. Uh, one of them's had a barbel, which tells me that the carp aren't feeding because the barbels never get to the bait here. So they usually get out competed by the carp so that just tells me that the carp are potentially spawning here we go it's coming up not a bad common that there we go really nice common Let's get it back. Try not to knock my camera over. Again, I don't think this is a massive fish. They all seem to be a similar sort of size today. Seem to be the smaller ones that are feeding. Like I said before, whether that's because the bigger ones are spawning, I don't know. Certainly fighting hard today though, it is mild. Probably got a lot of energy. This one's almost a leather carp. Hardly any scales on it, I'll show you. got a few scales across its dorsal but pretty much a leather cap <laughs> let's get this one out a bit further again and see if my theory's right and they're a little bit further out it's gone quiet down that margin few pellets over it so it stays on for the cast and we can try the casting as well because this is like I said it's a little bit further out see how it performs on the cast so let's get a nice hefty cast on it there we go so that cast absolutely perfectly no problems at all and sink my line 
small cap. Really small cap. I saw it then I thought this isn't fighting very hard <laughs> it's not a bad fish but you can feel when they're a bit bigger they feel like dead weights <laughs> around it <laughs> really stocky looking mirror look at how stocky it is it's missing half a fin as well no wonder it didn't fight very hard <laughs> look at how round that cap is it's like a football isn't it <laughs> but the rods handled it okay right belly on it right belly on it yeah <laughs> oh, you'll certainly know that fish if you catch it yeah, yeah definitely we'll call that one football <laughs> yeah with half of its half of its tail missing and uh, the belly <laughs> let's get it back oh. so if anybody fishes Harry's that one's got a name the football <laughs> oh hey up oh, we're not to the one that's why I use the bait runner Chunky common. God, it's running this one. This might be the best fish of the day so far. Coming this way, I don't know whether it's finished yet though. Put a little bit of pressure on it. Certainly giving me a good fight, this fish. <laughs> really angry carp. Oh, slapping about. with this little fish giving it some stick <laughs> oh. it's a fully scaled mirror this I think <sighs> this was on the scope X wafter Probably been in about five minutes. Might be the yellow baits that they want today. But yeah, beautiful dark, fully scale mirror, I think that. He's not an happy fish, this one. wind's really picking up now really nice rods these oh he had it <laughs> oh 
I'll let you deal with that one. This one's only small, <laughs> luckily. Yeah, no, it's a nice common. Nice common, this. They like those Scorpex wafters. I think it's the yellow colour that they like. It's getting a hump back, that one. That's going to be a nice fish, I think. That water's really warm. This is a good fish. Definitely fighting hard today. This isn't even a massive, this isn't even a big fish. Oh, lovely colours on it though. Let's have a close look at this one. Look at this mirror. Look at the browns and the reds on it. The um, the water is so warm. Sounds like dad's in as well. He must be moving through the swim. Okay folks, so we've had a good few fish on the phase ones now. So I'm confident in giving you my opinion. I think they've got a really nice action. I think they cast really well. And I do think they're up to the job of bigger fish as well. So at the price point of 15 quid or even the 30 quid, if you don't manage to get them in the sale, what absolutely cracking feeder rods. I definitely can't complain. They've handled the fish well. So they definitely get the Wesley's. Oh, well that one's shot off. That one was a, just a bit further down that margin. This is a problem when you're doing these outros. <laughs> Let's get you back on the head. That fish is still on. Just got you back on the head. <laughs> oh, I'm not taking, I'm not pointing back on wide angle though, so I'm not sure what you're going to be able to see. <laughs> Absolutely shot off. Always when I'm doing an outro. Always. <laughs> oh dear. I don't think it's massive, but it's taking some line, this one. I think it's a little mirror. <laughs> oh. As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, <laughs> I'm going to keep using these probably every other session for the next couple of months and we'll see if they stand the test of time. I think they will. I think they're robust enough so I don't see why they wouldn't. They're handling these medium sized carp really well. This one's just about ready to come in now. Some nice colours on it. They love those cell wafters. The carp. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's up perfectly in the side of the mouth there. Look at how nice the scale pattern is on this mirror carp. Lovely fish to end on. So once again, these core and feeder rods get the Westies angling thumbs up. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next Westies angling.